Hi, this is Greg from Structure Toolkit, and in this video we're going to be going through how to design a concrete sleeper retaining wall. Designing a concrete sleeper retaining wall in Toolkit is done in two parts. Firstly, with the sleeper walls module, where you design the footing and steel upright. And then secondly, the concrete member design module, where you design the concrete sleeper. The second step may not be needed if the engineer instead opts to use a standard sleeper that is to manufacture a specifications where the max span and retaining height is already given. If this is the case, you'll only need to watch the first part of this video. For the example in this video, we'll design a concrete sleeper wall that retains 1200 mm of soil with 1200 mm space in between each upright. We'll assume our internal angle of friction for the soil behind the wall is 30 degrees with a soil weight of 18 kN per meter cubed. For the soil around the footing, we'll use a cohesion of 30 kPa. To get started, we'll open up the sleeper wall module. This module uses Rankine theory to determine the soil pressures behind the sleeper wall to its base, being the top of the footing. These pressures are then used to design both the sleepers and uprights. An approach by Hoskin is then used to determine the overturn resistance of column type footings in either cohesionless or cohesive soils. A reference to the Hoskin material can be found in the info tab down the bottom here. On this tab we can see the references used with the Applied Structural Design book by Hoskin shown at the bottom. We then get the revisions this module has received throughout the years. This info tab is present on all toolkit design modules. Going back to the design, like with many of the toolkit modules, we'll start with our geometry at the top. Our retainer eye is going to be 1200, so we'll leave that as is, and our post centers will be 1200 as well. We'll keep the upright as steel, and then put the concrete sleepers to be yes. We'll now be given an option for setting our sleepers vertical height. And in this case, we'll be using 200, so we'll leave it as is. We'll leave our wrist class and back foot type as it is, Details about these inputs can be found in the relevant standard. We would then put our soil parameters for behind the wall on the left here, which in our case is just the defaults, and then our soil parameters at the footing, along with the footing diameter depth to the right. For our depth, we'll put in a tentative 1 meter. We'll ignore 200 of the topsoil and keep the 450mm diameter. As we discussed before, our soil cohesion will be 30 kPa, so we'll also leave that as it is. Next, we can alter the design load supplied to our wall in the form of surcharge, load factors, and additional overturning forces at the top of the wall. For our wall, we'll keep the default values and have no additional overturning forces. It is useful to note, though, that these inputs can be used to apply additional overturning forces due to a wind pressure applied on a fence from above. If we look to the right here, we can see some extra inputs for fence height, ultimate wind load, and a CPN value. This will then calculate a work in an ultimate shear and moment at the base of the fence that can then be applied to the thrust and overturned inputs. These inputs are for working loads and so you'd want to transfer the base values in this case. This covers all our initial inputs and if we look at the top we can see that our footing depth and diameter are sufficient for overturning with our 100UC also fine for moment, shear and deflection. The next step is to now design the concrete sleepers themselves. And in this video, we'll do it ourselves with the concrete member design. To help with this, the summary here gives us the relevant dead and live loads for the lowest sleeper in the retaining wall, being where the soil pressure is at its greatest. What we can do now is open up a concrete member design and transfer these loads into a linked analysis. And what we'll be hoping to do is match this maximum moment we've got here of 0.41 kilonewton meters. So we'll go back to our desktop, open up a concrete member design, Firstly, we'll put in our concrete strength, depth, and width, where we'll use 40 MPa and an 80 by 200 sleeper. We'll put two N10 bars for central reinforcement by using the bottom reinforcement options and then getting rid of the top reinforcement. To the right we can find out what cover we need to specify in order to get the bottom bars to be central, in this case being 23mm. If we then look at the preview tab at the bottom, we can see the bars central as intended. Next we can input our loading into a linked analysis module 
by opening one up from the design tab. In here we'll set our span to be 1200, input our loads of 1.39 and 0.35 for dead and live. As we're dealing with horizontal forces, we'll turn off the self weight and set live load type to permanent. This will make all our psi factors one. One more thing we need to change is the dead load factor for our load combination. As the design load section for AS4678 requires the dead load factor to be 1.25 instead of 1.2. And so we'll change that on the right down here. With this done, we should arrive at a maximum moment that is the same as our sleeper wall document being 0.41 kilonewton meters. What we can do now is switch back to the design module, click the maximum moment button, which will bring in our maximum moment. And for our specified sleeper, it is well within capacity. Something to note though, is that the sleepers specified by manufacturers are often over-designed, which may result in a KU of greater than 0.36, meaning non-ductile. To get around this, you could instead check the design with a smaller bar size, ensuring the capacity is met while also having a KU of less than 0.36. The next thing we will do now is check the deflection of our sleeper. To do this, we will need to switch to the deflection tab at the bottom. However, before we do this, we'll probably need to change our environment from interior. To change this, we can go to the creep and shrink tab at the bottom. And for this sleeper wall, we'll assume we are in a temperate climate and select that. We now go to the deflection tab, where we need to click the max deflection and transfer reinforcement buttons, which will transfer the results from the point of maximum deflection along with the reinforcement we specified in the design tab. As there is only a positive sagging moment in the center of the sleeper being simply supported, the AST only designates reinforcement to this segment being at X. At the top we can now see our deflections with our total being 4.8 millimeters or span on 248, which for example sleeper wall is likely satisfactory. If we wanted to, we could then change the deflection limit defaults down the bottom to get rid of this warning. That about covers all you need to know for designing a concrete sleeper retaining wall and toolkit. Feel free to check out our website and our other videos for more tutorials and help with using this software. If you have any questions, please contact our support team via email or by calling us. Thanks for watching.